To me, folks, for many years, it's been utterly bizarre that the taxpayer owns Channel 4. So if you ask us, it's good news that it'll be sold and the cash spent elsewhere. The Culture Secretary, Nadine Dorries, has said that the cash would be used to boost projects in her field, culture, and would be part of the levelling up agenda, things like film and all the rest of it. Sounds good, if you ask me. That's not to say Channel 4 can't go on, of course. Someone can snap it up and it can thrive, no doubt, in the private sector. Some of its content, I dare say, is appealing to some British people. But for many, many years, Channel 4 has been given a free ride because no government minister could be bothered to deal with it, frankly. The days of needing a channel that can create edgy content, I think, is more antiquated than the idea that the government is needed to regulate the price of a chocolate biscuit. Yes, that actually did used to happen until Ted Heath, but let's not go there. I was also interested to learn that Channel 4 is required by law, I didn't know this, to offer significant volumes of content with educational value and used to devote 15% of its budget to education. Apparently, it hasn't had a head of education since 2010. Now, if you ask me, folks, today, the only thing it educates, educates us viewers on is exclusively in being one of the three Bs. Anti-Boris, anti-Brexit, and anti-Britain. I think I'll never forget the coverage from 2016 onwards on Brexit, where it was about as impartial on being opposed to Brexit as I was in favour of it, and I was one of the bloody designated campaigners in the damn referendum. But speaking of Brexit, right, it, it was interesting to me how the Labour Party was so quick to accuse the right of being xenophobic and anti-foreigners for wanting to leave the EU. Yet their argument, their prized argument from the shadow cabinet, this comes from the heart of the Labour Party, their argument against the privatisation of Channel 4 appears to be built around the fact that a foreign company will take it over. Selling it off to a foreign-owned media company, which is what would happen uh, otherwise, will see reduced investment, will see uh, profits being uh, pulled pulled away, and it will see reduced investments in that great British programming that Channel 4 is renowned for. Hang on a minute. I thought you were all meant to be progressive liberals that were unapologetically pro-foreign investment and foreign labour and all the rest of it. And in all honesty, with the explosion of choice that we have on the market today, can you honestly tell me that we simply must have Channel 4 News to remain owned by the taxpayer. Why do you need Channel 4 in an age of Netflix and Amazon Prime and Now TV and all these other, the plethora of choice that you've got? Some Tory MPs are going to kick off about the sale of Channel 4, right? But apparently they won't kick off about lockdowns, tax hikes or our impending immiseration via the net zero by 2050 target. If you ask me, folks, these people are about as conservative as Diane Abbott. And Ben Bradley, the MP in Mansfield, he put it really well. He had a proper mint reply, if you ask me, that was leaked to the spectator. He said, in reply to Damien Green MP, who said, quite so, why do this? It's a, solu a solution without a problem. Ben Bradley replied, is there no sense of purpose? We're not here to just manage stuff slightly more efficiently than the other lot. We're a conservative government. I think you're asking the wrong question. Surely the obvious question and starting point is, why does the state need to own it? Answer, it doesn't. And because that's how we've always done it is not a justification. Exactly. When Margaret Thatcher was bringing about Channel 4, she didn't imagine that there would be the likes of Netflix, Amazon Prime and all the other choice that we have available to us. Times move on. I dare say Mrs Thatcher herself would say it was lunacy for the taxpayer to own Channel 4 in this day and age. Of course, folks, forget the Tories. The cherry on the cake, the pièce de résistance was all of the leftists saying things like, Belle Ribeiro, our DMP, she said, Channel 4 supports independent film and TV across the UK and conducts brilliant investigative journalism, all at no cost to the taxpayer. 
privatizing it is part of a vindictive Tory attack on public ownership and institutions that subject the government to any sort of scrutiny. You mean that hold the government to account with left-wing bias and anti-Brexit bias? And actually, the point that she makes there about independent film and TV across the UK, Netflix spends an absolute massive amount of money in this country, that there are private investors who can do exactly the same thing. The Labour MP Claudia Webb, who is in a fair share of um, legal rigmarole, shall we say, she said, the government has just confirmed its intention to privatise Channel 4. This is not freedom or independence. It's the seedbed of fascism. I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'm not sure I recall the likes of Adolf Hitler or indeed uh, Vladimir Putin selling off their state-owned enterprises, allowing them to go private, still allowing them to operate, still allowing them to have a voice, but just saying, we want the taxpayer cash for our own, thanks very much. The hyperbole, how offensive to survivors of Holocaust and all of these other things. Alistair Campbell, remember him, of Iraq fame, he said, the Channel 4 move is right out of the Orban playbook. That's Viktor Orban, the leader in Hungary who's just won another election. The Orban playbook and timed to make it blatant. Part of their purpose is to wind up liberals. Well, I mean, if that is their purpose, they're doing a pretty bloody good job, aren't they? Why are they so angry about this? Could it be, folks? Could it be? Let's hazard a guess. Could it be because they are exclusively opposed to conservatism at Channel 4 News? Could it be because for so long they have managed to oppose our nation getting its debts under control and the capitalist economic model and basically the values, what should be the core values of the Conservative Party? I'll leave that for you to decide. 